So I want to start having these semi-regular chats, and we're going to call it Moco Chat. Um, got my pie, got my cup of tea. Cue the cheesy intro. Basically, I've had a number of questions on my YouTube, on my Insta. It's quite hard to thread them into the vlog. And so I thought I'd start having these informal chats in my garage. Uh, for all of you who don't know, I'm Josh. I'm a builder here in New Zealand and I have been vlogging my house build on the section that nobody wanted. Today's video will be slightly different. We're gonna have a bit of an apprenticeship theme. Right, so um, Tirata Kemp commented on my I loved my building apprenticeship video. I'd love to hear about the hardest obstacle you found with your first year of becoming an apprentice. What exactly was it and how did you overcome it? Uh, great question, Tirata. So first off, I think I should point out that my apprenticeship was slightly different to what you might call the traditional. So I dropped out of school and started cleaning toilets at McDonald's. Long story short, I worked my way up the management chain there, was running a store. I had 10 years of hospitality experience and then decided that I wanted to try something hands-on. And so as a 25 year old, I took on an adult apprenticeship for a local builder here. At the time it was just me and him. He would have been what you would call a more traditional carpenter and we did everything in the house start to finish um, and a lot of little jobs as well. So I rem vividly remember one job early on was that we had to dig a house footing, the entire perimeter, by hand. Basically it was just past the 2008 crash and work was still quite sparse and so what my boss did at the time is that he would get us to do as many jobs as we could basically to stretch the work out and keep us busy. Um, so anyway, what was the hardest part of that first year? It's funny because like right now thinking back, I don't, obviously, at that time, it would have been fresh and I would have said, oh, this. But right now, honestly, I'm struggling to look back at that. That was 12 years ago. So what I do remember about my first year, lots of digging, lots of random jobs, lots of manual labor. That's a good question. Honestly, man, I am actually struggling. What was the hardest part of my first year? Okay, I can think of a couple. Two things. There was lots and lots of like dumb jobs, like digging, nailing, punching nails in, bracket nails, two months doing this huge rock retaining wall. And of course, being the apprentice, I was on like moving the rocks. And I think that first year is really like, you have to prove yourself to the team and also to yourself. You have to get stuck in, you have to do it without moaning. Cause at the end of the day, if you don't do it, one of the more qualified people on site is gonna have to do it anyway. Someone has to do it. Someone has to go and dig 20 fence post holes. Someone has to go and um, nail off literally a thousand bracket nails. Um, and so unfortunately, as a brand new apprentice, usually that's your like induction to site and those are your jobs to do. And that's not just because that's beneath the builder. Now that I have had people work for me and I'll set them up with jobs, often I find something that number one, I can easily explain, number two, they can easily learn, and number three, they can repeat. Re with that repetition of using the hammer or the drill all day, you start to learn, get a handle for things. When I'm giving a first year apprentice a job, I'm looking for that attitude. What did I really struggle with? Is there's days where I was just like, oh man, give me a break. And so what I would do, like, I would break it down into like little mini goals, like, Right, I'm gonna see if I can get to hole number four before morning smoker. Um, and then I'm gonna try and get to here by lunch smoker. And then like, I would literally just think about one hole at a time. I remember one day I had to do uh, all the fence post holes for what would have been a 50 meter fence. Every two meters, that's 25, 26 holes and I suppose it's real hard to have a good attitude about something like that and it's real hard to feel like, oh, I'm just being treated like crap. 
um, you know, I've got, I'm getting all the dumb jobs and you kind of want, you want all the glory jobs, other guys doing all the cool stuff and you think, man, why do I have a dumb job? Part of doing your time, you've got to, you do have to learn from the bottom up, but you will be a better builder because you have learned from the bottom up. And then also think about like when you're qualified and you have an apprentice, you'll have an appreciation for what they're going through and you can, you know, relate to them and teach them a little bit better. And so I think that's important if, if you're not quite loving things right now, think about like, well, what will you do differently? Because one day, most likely you will be a qualified builder and you will be in charge of people. And so that's your opportunity to um, improve the next generation. I think one bonus tip about what I struggled with in, at the start of my apprenticeship, I was thinking the word frustration came to mind. So like frustration in myself, I'd watch the builder and he would like just freehand with the skilly and like just, he made it look effortless. And the same with nailing, like I remember like it felt like I either miss or hit my finger or it'd take twice as many swings. And so there's a number of jobs that you think you, you're useless or I remember I was like like scared of the skill saw to start with and now I feel like I'm a little bit like my first boss where I've got the confidence to just be like oh yeah mate we'll just rip that down on the skilly I see those newbies on site and it you know reminds me that I was like that as well so what am I, what am I trying to say it takes time to develop a skill and so don't expect yourself to be awesome on day one or even in year one like that there's a reason why an apprenticeship generally takes three to four years because it takes about that long for you to master enough of the skills to be able to say confidently yeah i can do that um so great question tarada thanks for asking i uh, hope hope that helps i'm just going to enjoy a bite of my custard square As a result of that video, I've also had a number of questions about, hey, I'm 35 and should I consider a building apprenticeship? Or what age is too old to be a builder? And it's such an ambiguous question, but my five cents worth on that is that there's never a right time or a wrong time, for sure. I think you can definitely do an apprenticeship in your 30s or 40s, but what I think you need to think about is what's the reasons why you want to be a builder? Because it is hard work and it will be long, hard days on site. And so is it that you're currently frustrated with your job and you're glamorizing like I wish I was out on site all day? Also, what are you trying to achieve? What's the end goal? Like, are you, do you want a career as a builder or are you just trying to like upskill yourself? Because if you are just wanting to gain some more skills and do some better um, DIY kind of projects, there's way better ways to achieve that than committing four years of your life and most usually you'll probably be taking a pay cut to get that skill. Um, so that's number question number one. Like if you are 30 or 40 and you're considering an apprenticeship. So the next thing I would always encourage people to do is like, rather than going all in, how about taking like two to three months off your current job and working with or for a builder, even if you offer to work for free, like basically look at it as like this. If you invest a month, two months, three months, and you realize, holy moly, building is not for me. Now that's way better than you totally quitting your job, totally changing direction, making this huge life altering decision and committing the next four years and then getting a year in and deciding like, man, this is harder than I thought or I thought it was gonna be like, smoko time all day, but I'm really struggling with the digging and the nailing. At the end of the day, a builder, qualified or not, is still gonna have to chop wood, bang nails, lift stuff, move stuff. They're gonna have to work in the rain. And that work can be really rewarding, especially when you come from like a management point of view. I found being on site so rewarding and seeing like, even if it was digging 25 holes, I found seeing those 25 holes at the end of the day so satisfying compared to some of my management roles where I felt like I was fighting fires all day 
and using a lot of my brain power, but then I had nothing to show for it. So yeah, that's a pretty long winded answer, but um, should you build, should you do an apprenticeship in your 30s or 40s and what's too old? Establish your why first. What are you trying to achieve? And is an apprenticeship the best way to achieve that? that is, sorry, I know that's not a yes or no answer, but such a big decision like that requires thinking. I think that's probably true whether you're 18 or 48. Um, or anywhere in between. Before you commit to an apprenticeship, number one, ask yourself why, and number two, if you're still unsure, dip your toes in the water, do some experience, get on site, get amongst it, and see what happens. Episode one of Smoko Chat, hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for engaging, hopefully you've clicked like, the notification bell, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next episode.